So hi, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. So uh, since Singen we have been traveling, so this is uh, uh, hard to know the time zones. Uh, so I'm not sure that internet connection is okay. And, uh, and I'm not also sure that if the internet connection will continuously go okay. So if it stops, it stops. So uh, we'll just continue trying to do our best. Hopefully that uh, internet connection will continuously do okay. So, so hello everybody. Uh, how was the last meditation? that uh, we did uh, some time ago, um, discovering the dance of the stillness. So uh, have you all been doing the practices? And uh, have you trying to make some kind of commitment to trying to reduce the activity, a movement of dualistic movement movement of pain, movement of confusion, uh, reducing that and trying to achieve more uh, stillness, uh, entering into the stillness and seeing that the, the actions occurring from the stillness is equally powerful. So how the meditation is going? So that's my first question to all of you. So those you have been uh, not followed uh, uh, the last session, so I just wanted to briefly explain a little bit what uh, my intention is to do these three different talks as part of the uh, pith instructions of personal reflection of Dzogchen teachings. So there's the three things that we are trying to do is discuss about the discovering the dance of the stillness. So discovering the dance of the stillness and finding the melody in silence. So finding the melody in silence and embracing the warmth in consciousness, warmth of consciousness. So discovering the dance of the stillness, finding the melody in silence, embracing the warmth of spaciousness. So these are the three um, aspects of the teaching that we are planning to do. And one we did the last time, discovering the dance of the stillness. So tonight uh, we're gonna discuss and practice a little bit about the finding the melody in silence. So just kind of overview a little bit about these three principles is these three principles of the teaching is very uh, directly it's coming from the principle of the Dzogchen teaching and particularly the idea of three doors so that our body, our speech, our mind being access, entrance to our true essence, to our true self. Sometimes they can also be uh, exit uh, from our essence, from the source. And very often for many people, it does becomes like a ac exit from our uh, connection to our true source. So this is the kind of important point here. Um, so why I'm trying to discuss these things. Why I think it's important is because anybody who does meditation, and when we do meditation, we always working with our body, trying to be still, trying to find the right posture, right movement in order to unblock, in order to flow the energy better, in order to experience higher state of consciousness, awakened state of consciousness. Um, we also are trying to, many meditators, we're trying to uh, remain silent. So we're trying to uh, vow and promise ourselves that one, one will not talk for a certain period of time. 
and um, we also are trying to when we meditate we're trying to not to think not to uh, have thoughts uh, trying to uh, build some sense of concentration practices so when we do that there's a two possibility one you are doing fine you are having great experiences on the other hand sometime for some people you are doing it but you are forcing yourself to controlling your body controlling your speech controlling your mind as a result of controlling your mind you're blocking your body you're blocking your speech you're blocking your mind so that means you kind of paralyzing uh, a lot of effort it put into into your body body become very stiff uh, body become very uh, effortful body become like feeling a blockages in certain areas of energy centers in the body and so uh, and also the speech you're trying to uh, block your flow of your speech so some some basically somehow that as a result of controlling your body speech and mind the meditation is not it doesn't goes well so basically it works kind of against you so so here reason why we discuss about it is that it, it is in the beginning some little control is okay a uh, little effort is okay but eventually uh, meditation as meditation goes deeper and deeper and deeper uh, less and less and less effort uh, less and less feeling stiff and more and more feeling free more and more feeling relaxed and more and more feeling a sense of flow and freedom so these experiences are very important when when that happens then that is the time when I'm talking about discovering the dance of stillness so you're still but you feel totally free you feel your body is very relaxed your body is very open and your body is like a in a, in a way it's like a flowing uh, the actions can happen a movement can happen dance can happen and but still you remain connected to the source and the stillness so that so the dance arises from that stillness the effortlessness arises from that stillness and pr productivity creativity arises from that stillness so whatever is arising from that stillness it's, it's like a freedom flow creative dance that is I think it's very very important so stillness does not mean like a dead or stillness does not mean uh, effectless stillness does not mean uh, fruit fruitless stillness does not mean absence of action and movement St stillness does not mean any of those things in contrary stillness means like movement dance flow freedom so that's what it means and then same thing with the silence silence does not mean dead silence does not mean control silence does not mean effort silence does not mean nothing instead silence means peace silent means bliss silence means a luminosity silence means M melody silence means communication silence means connection so si in silence there is a, so much a sense of liveliness so as I'm speaking right now I want everybody to just focus a little bit inward just for a moment look focus a little bit inward and just feel the silence
Feel the silence around and within you. Feel the silence in sense of collective silence that all the Cyber Sangha at this moment, those who are participating with us, we are all hearing a collective sacred silence. So be aware of that silence. There is a strong sense of presence there. Be aware of that. There's a deep sense of peacefulness in the silence. Be aware of that. There is a strong sense of a warmth, liveliness in this silence. Be aware of that. You are aware of your inner silence. That awareness is a wisdom of silence because it is aware of silence. Jyotu mepi ishi, jume ishi. According in the Shangju Nianju teaching, it says jume ishi ji. The silence is like a base. Sounds are like a dynamic energy. The awareness of the silence, a specific qualities of the silence, like, like not a dead or nothing, instead, it's a presence. There's a presence in there. There is a no. There, there is not a noise there. There is no noise there. This moment. We are all collectively experiencing silence. There is clearly, without any doubt, there is a power of collective practice. We are all blessing each other, helping each other, supporting each other, that you as one individual can access your true silence without the noise. There is a presence there. This can be called transmission. Even you all are remaining quiet, remaining in silence. You're not feeling discomfort. You're feeling peace. 
and bliss. and warmth. This warmth, this peace, this bliss, this presence are, are like melody, finding a melody in silence. They are like a music of the silence. They heal you. The silence, it's not a boring place. If you are connected to it, if the connection is there, it's not a boring. If awareness is there, it's clearly not dead. It's lively. It's living. It's luminous. So this liveliness, warmth, luminosity, presence, peace, bliss, these all are like a melody in the silence. They are like a music in the silence. They give you a life force. They give you healing. Then this silence is completely different than the silence that many meditators experience in the basis of controlling your voice, controlling your speech, controlling the volume. based on control and effort and pain. There is no melody. Maybe there is no noise or discomfort or sense of boring, but there is a lot of effort. There's no light. So I want all of you continuously, very clearly, very distinctively, as we all experiencing this collective silence this moment, I want all of you clearly, distinctively experience these differences between absence of noise, in, instead of just absence of noise, but feel the presence of qualities. Instead of just absence of sound, but feel the presence of like bliss, of warmth. So it's not absence of things, it's more 
presence of things. You're not trying to control things. You're trying to be conscious and aware of things. You're not trying to die in the, in the process of meditating. You're trying to become alive in the process of meditating. Let's continue. And feel this sense of a collective presence of silence, a silence which is perfected with all the qualities. It's not just absence of noise, sound, voices, disturbances, but it's a presence of peace, bliss, warmth, light. It's a, such a, a living experience when you are aware of this silence. Feel this quality through the silence. All these qualities are like a melody they are like a music. You listen to the silence. You feel the silence. You experience all these qualities. And the, all these qualities are like a blessings, energies that you feel in your body, in your heart, in each of your organs. around you, within you. You're impacting other, others around you with this deep presence of silence. We know very clearly how we impact others when we speak through our pain, from our fear, we affect our surrounding. We affect other people's life. So this is the way, in a way, this is the way to, to discover your true voice. So in, in a sense of idea of like discovering your true voice, what is your true voice? The true voice is coming from true sacred space. True voice is not the voice which is coming from 
ignorance, fear, confusion, anger, judgments, weakness. The true voice is coming from boundless openness, a spontaneous awareness, effortless. That's, that's the true voice. And the true voice is also, in a sense, it's like a minimum. Minimum in terms of the, what, what is spoken, but the maximum in terms of its effect, its connection, ability to connect, ability to impact ability to change things. Like in any good communication, a minimum, clear, true, from the source, whatever you say, it has a more impact than saying lot, saying very loud, saying very complaining way, pain speech saying from the wrong places like fear or pain, wound. They don't communicate, they don't heal, they don't connect. You scared people. It's like a today's, like a political world where people, in order to discuss they don't just discuss what is most valuable in terms of the collective benefits. They discuss more individual benefit, but undermining others, other people, undermining uh, other people, minimizing other people. Those are like a pain speech. You're not connecting, you're disconnecting. You might get something temporarily what you want or what you wish, but eventually you lose. So that's not the way to communicate. So finding your true voice, that's what it means. A power voice. Because why is power, power voice? Why is voice coming from the source of power. It's coming from the sense of confidence. A voice which is also effective. Many times people talk about social justice. Trying to speak out. It's very important to do, but it do have to come from right place. Right space, right energy, r with right deep sense of confidence. Then it will have its power impact. So the voice of power. So these are like qualities of speech which arises as like a melody of silence from the source when one is connected. So, so as a conclusion, what, what I wanted to try to say here is again, once again, you know, we talked about uh, 2018 trying to reduce the activity, um, five to 10% of activities. Uh, probably most of the time people will say, oh, you need to do more. So I'm trying to say, do less. 
but do from the right place, but have more impact, more outcome, more fruits, more results, more benef collective benefic benefits, but, but do less. So we talked last time, talk about stillness and doing less. Today we are talking about silence and speak less. So are you ready? So are you ready to, from five to 10%, reduction of your speeches in 2018. I am ready. So my question to all of you is, are you ready so we have like a 282 people here listening, so I at least kind of jumping in and out. But my question to you all is, are you ready to some degree of commit to reduce pain speech? and to connect with the silence. When people are angry at each other, when somebody is talking a lot, people say, shut up, right? But it's not a shut up. It's not like a controlling of your speech, rather than being aware of the silence, rather than feeling the freedom, discovering the melody, discovering the joy, discovering the peace in remaining in silence. Why people speak too much or why people speak so loud? Because they don't feel connection. They don't feel the peace. They don't feel that warmth and comfort within themselves or within the silence. When you begin to discover the quality of the silence, you enjoy. This moment when I'm speaking and I'm a little bit quiet, I'm not just speechless, I'm not controlling my speech. I am enjoying the silence. I am feeling peace. I am discovering qualities of the silence. I am discovering the melodies of the silence. I am feeling connection to all of you the moment when I remain silence. I am feeling connection to the, all the lineages of Shangyuniji, the Dzogchen masters, my lineage teachers, my teachers, in this special moment when I remain silent.
Silence is my door to my voice. So I hope, so this is uh, like a little bit like a, a meditation and a, um, explanation, the teaching together. So I hope that uh, was helpful. So how do you all feel? You all hear me okay? Sound is clear, images are clear. Maybe you're all in silence this moment. <laughs> Good to see you, many familiar faces. So, Singe, and uh, we are traveling uh, in Southeast Asia. We are all on our way to Saigon. And, uh, and then uh, to Hong Kong. So uh, last, it's a winter holiday in India, school holiday. So uh, for one month and a half, there's no schedule for teaching or anything. So I'm, um, it's like on my holiday, but uh, with the Singe, it's, uh, it's not exactly holiday. So it's like a babysitting full time. And uh, as Tsering is back in California, going to school, or her classes, attending her classes, so I'm with, traveling with Singe. So this is actually one in the morning right now, around, I think around one o'clock or maybe one and a half now. This I started at one o'clock in the morning, so it's one and a half, close to two o'clock in the morning. And uh, I probably, this time seems quite good, peaceful. He is sleeping right now in silence, quiet. So it's a good time to do this webcast. So, um, so the next next schedule is the 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 only reason why I was not able to frequently do this is always internet connection is really really bad, and uh, so t tonight I have to place where we are staying. I have to find different locations, trying to find the right places and. Uh, in our room was not a good connection, so I have to go into this public library here. And also, uh, this time of the night or in the morning, nobody's here. But if somebody's here, then I won't be able to talk. So, so, <laughs> so this seems like a good time where everybody else is sleeping. Um, so next schedule is uh, on Monday. Uh, we said about Monday, 10 p.m. New York time. But I think we are going to change that to do it Monday, uh, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. So let's say Monday, 1 p.m. New York time. So that will be here, here will be Monday, 1 a.m., uh, which is, I think it's a good good time to do that, so I think where everybody everybody is sleeping. So, uh, so we will keep. So please look at the um, Facebook page, look at the schedule, so the update of the schedule because it was announced at Monday 10, 
10 a.m. New York time. So it's no longer Monday, 10 a.m. New York time. So Monday, uh, 1 p.m. New York time. So we will be uh, reposting that note again. So um, uh, good to see you all. A lot of familiar faces. So may, may you all discover uh, so many beautiful qualities in the silence. May you all enjoy the silence. Thank you.